Hello everyone. We'll start with the refraction through prism now. We know the structure and how light deviates or gets refracted from a prism. Uh, this is my rough diagram. I'll make the better diagram again. But if this is a prism structure, okay, what are the rays we consider? First of all, the ray which is falling on this surface. I'll draw a normal here, right? So this ray is going from region 1 which is rarer to a denser medium. So instead of going straight like this, the ray is supposed to bend towards the normal, right? Then we have second surface where the light ray is going from a denser to rarer medium back to mu1. And this time, instead of going straight, the ray is going to get away from the normal. That means in this direction. So this was the actual path of the ray. This is the emergent path of the ray. So if I join these two lines, I'll get the angle up to which the light ray has deviated from its path. The light ray has bent from its path. So this angle is called the angle of deviation which a prism causes, right? The straight path was deviated up to this point. So this is the angle of deviation delta. Now, I'm going to draw the same diagram again because it will involve a bit more terms. Let's see. This is my prism. I have a ray, the incident ray, okay, this is my incident ray at this point. The angle which incident ray makes with the normal is called angle of incidence. So this is my angle of incidence, first of all, let it be I, okay. This ray which was supposed to go in this direction is bending towards the normal. So the ray will bend in this direction. Then again, here you have another normal. So instead of going straight in this direction, the ray of light is going to bend away from the normal this time. Getting away is, is in this direction, right? So this is the incident ray and this is the emergent ray. I'm rubbing those points which are not required. This is my angle of emergence. What is the angle of deviation? I'll extend the emergent ray backwards and I'll get this as my angle of deviation, right? It is denoted by delta. This is the sign. So now I want to establish a relation between I, E, delta and the prism angle. What is the angle of prism? This thing, A, okay? To do that, I'm doing a bit more construction here. I'm joining these two lines this one and this one basically these two are the normals associated with both the sides one and two now for in this diagram you can see that angle i is equal to i'm marking more angles now what is the first refraction angle this was angle of incidence what is the refraction angle this which is equal to let it be r1 what is the angle of refraction for the second surface for the second surface, angle of refraction is E. Try to understand. The ray which is incident on any surface is called incident ray. So on this surface, this is my incident ray, right? So this incident ray which is making some angle with the normal is called the angle of incidence. So this is my angle of incidence for the second surface. But right now, just to establish a relation between I, E, A, I am writing it R2. But you guys have to remember that this was the angle of incidence for the second surface and this is the angle of emergence. Basically, this is the angle of refraction for the second surface, right? Let it be angle 3. Oh, this is angle 1. This is angle 2. And this is my angle 3. Okay? Now, I is equal to angle 1 plus R1. Angle 1 plus R1. Why? Vertical opposed angles. Similarly, in this diagram, angle E is equal to R2 plus 2, angle 2 plus R2. Adding both, I'll get what? I plus E is equal to angle 1 plus angle 2 plus R1 plus R2, right? 
Now, what is angle 1 plus angle 2? Focus on this triangle. I'll mark it with another color. Focus on this triangle. Angle 1, C. This, this, and this triangle. In this triangle, angle 1 and 2 are basically vertically opposite angles or two interior opposite angles of delta. You remember that theorem of mass? The external angle of a triangle is equal to sum of two interior opposite angles. So, delta is equal to angle 1 plus angle 2. So, I'll have here instead of these two terms, I can write and what delta rest remains the same delta plus r1 plus r2 now uh, uh, we have to deduce an expression between re delta and the prism angle a where three terms are already done we are supposed to find the relation between r1 r2 and a so what we are going to do see in this triangle the lower triangle these two red lines r1 plus r2 plus angle 3 R1 plus R2 plus angle 3 is equal to 180 degree because they are some of the angles of a triangle. So that makes R1 plus R2 is equal to 180 degrees minus angle 3, right? Another thing, this is a cyclic quadrilateral. How am I so sure that this these four points are vertices of a cyclic quadrilateral? What is a cyclic quadrilateral? where sum of two angles, the opposite, diagonally opposite angles are equal to 180 degree. Here, this is a normal, that means this whole angle is 90 degree. Similarly, this is also normal, that means perpendicular 90 degree. So, these two sum, angle of two opposite, diagonally opposite angles are 180, that means it's a cyclic quadrilateral. Henceforth, A and 3 will also be equal to 180 degree. So, angle A plus angle 3 is equal to 180 degree, therefore, a is also equal to 180 degree minus angle 3 or I should write it like this second and this is my first equation compare from 2 and 3 what do we get r1 plus r2 is also equal to 180 minus 3 and a is also equal to 180 minus 3 that means r1 plus r2 is equal to angle of prism which is a so putting this value substituting this value in equation 1 what do we get we get I plus E is equal to delta plus A. This is the required equation which we were looking for. Now, we have if, you can write it, I am going to rub. So, if I draw a relation which is basically graphical relation between various angles using this equation, what do we get? See. If I am taking the angle of deviation on this side, which is y axis and angle of incidence on this side, I will get the graph something like this. This particular experiment is also in your plus 2 practicals, right? So, you already have drawn it, I guess, by the time you are watching this video or you are supposed to. So, this is how deviation changes. First, it decreases and then it increases again. So, this particular point which corresponds to minimum value of delta is called angle of minimum deviation, delta m. The new term introduces angle of minimum deviation, okay. Second thing, for any particular angle of delta, you have two different values of i. For example, for this value of delta, that means at this value of delta, I am having two different values of i. One is this, another is this. So, these are those values at which first of all, if suppose this is 30 degree and this is 60 degree. So, at both 30 degree of angle of incidence and 60 degree of angle of incidence, the angle of deviation is going to be same plus the emergence, angle of emergence. How is this angle related to angle I? Is it always equal or is it not? This is a question which you are going to get the answer in a while. But see, I am giving you a hint that at angle of minimum deviation, there is only one value of I. So, all we can say at angle of minimum deviation, I and E are always equal. 
so r and r1 and r2 are also equal see what will we get using this relation first of all there were two things i have to use this equation see i would actually start writing here this was the equation i plus e is equal to delta plus what a now at angle of minimum deviation i is equal to e therefore putting this value in this equation what i what do i get i plus i is equal to delta plus a right no it should be delta m because this thing happens only in case of angle of minimum deviation so 2i is equal to delta m plus a that gives you i is equal to delta m plus a upon 2 this is the value of angle of incidence number 2 we deduced this part that r1 plus r2 was equal to a right but at delta m first thing is i is equal to a and second thing is r1 is equal to r2 therefore r let it let us call it r right because just taking this r1 as angle of reflection r corresponding to that i so r plus r is equal to a from this equation instead of r1 and r2 is equal to a we are writing r plus r equal to a hence we get 2r is equal to a that means r is equal to a by 2 according to snell's law now we don't need this thing I might as well uh, rub this diagram. So, according to Snell's law, what is mu? Refractive index is sin i upon sin r. Refractive index of what? Refractive index of prism. Okay. Many times I have written this same thing in different format. What? In terms of this if this is mu1 this is mu2 this is mu1 for any part for example let this part for this part sin i upon sin r is equal to is equal to what mu which mu 1 mu2 or 2 mu1 light is going from 1 to 2 this is 1 mu2 and this ultimately con converted into mu2 upon mu1 which is actually equal to refractive index of the glass of the prism because this is what refractive index of the medium upon refractive index of the surrounding so that is why straight away wrote that part now mu is equal to sin i upon sin r so instead of i i am using this instead of r i am using this so i am left with this part mu is equal to sin a plus delta m upon 2 upon sin a by 2 this particular equation my friends is called the prism formula